Whitman is the iconic American poet, and everyone has had to kind of deal with him because he set poetry free. He unloosened it from its constriction and also brought together a way of thinking about democracy, a way of embodying democracy, a way of moving the conversation forward that we need to move even more forward. My words itch at your ears. So what we want to do is bring these Walt Whitman films that were created by Compañía de Columbari with over 50 people around the world and uh, all reciting and embodying the words of Song of Myself from Walt Whitman's 1855 uh, first version of the poem and mingle them with the voices of the poets who are here in Syracuse. I love, I love the crossing over of disciplines involved in it. I like that it's a theater company making films that in turn do community tours and collaborate with poets and collaborate with museums. I, I love the cross-disciplinarity of it. Stop this day and it spins on its axis blurs to resemble a fingertip above the surface it's smashing. Every atom belonging to every dinner table library exchange now crushed beneath it, silent. Good shoes and the public road blurred and useless. What I assume is that the days will stay hollow now I wash the bathroom walls. Now I think there's no one to tell that there's no news. Now I tramp a long path behind my dog along an empty sidewalk. Every week makes itself an empty church. No philosophy, no revelations. Each woman of lost moments cutting through my mind's lost tide. A bold swimmer whispering, you dreamed contemptible dreams, and now that's all you get. You timidly waited when the tide called. You tried to find perfection in you. And you can't swim to anywhere, everywhere on water. I stopped that day. And now every month tumbles its parts toward eternity. Every hour great or small within reach of my fingers. I watch the sea I'm missing rise again. The swimmer, left hand hooking water and kelp, bobs again towards me, whispers in one ear, you must travel, and in the other, you must have it yourself to dry and empty days. I watch her fling salt toward my face and laughingly dash through waves that will never touch this land, never touch this room, that now roots me in blurry stopped weeks and crack the air as I sing myself. My theme from the Song of Myself was seen and unseen. So I was examining the aspects of those things that are so small we can't see them, or they're hidden from us, or they're so big we can't conceive of them. Helios. Do you ever grow weary of the burden of burning? The responsibility, I asked. The sun held its face. No, no smirk or big, big O of surprise. Of surprise. I, I continued, continued. So, so what, what does, does it feel, feel like as skin? Still, the sun just kept blazing through the maple leaves, not yet summer stressed, and my arms were soothed. Everything stretched higher than the day before. The electric green aphids, no larger than periods a week ago, skittered and fell from above into my hair, spilling like sesame seeds across the table. 
Without language, the song reminded me, no doubt there will always be an inferno fueling the living. There will always be this ancient, unspoken truth. Logic is unnecessary. Fire is licking worlds I only know from maps, desolate and crisp. Even the tundra is scorched. Overhead, the night sky is pricked full of suns. How many of those lights still burn? Do they corral planets and moons like our own sun's slender sister? Are there ice fields and maelstroms, denizens who tremble and quake, delight and dream? There are worlds right here, deep in our oceans where light never touches, and those burrowed in the soil beneath our feet. Thousands of life forms inhabit every tree, and beneath the surface, an equal expanse of roots mingles among the rocks. It is possible the speck of a red spider walking along my forearm is the Buddha. Wherever it makes its home is far too small for my limited sight. Logic has not satisfied my queries. Neither guilt nor compassion restrained my thumb. This is the city. I am on the citizens. Whatever interests the rest, interests me. My poem is like about the city of Syracuse and like the things that I li like about it and like the things that other cities are known for and like what Syracuse is known for. My city. Paris, yes. the city, city of, of light, light and love. love. New York City, a.k.a. the Big Apple. Tokyo, a city far in the future. Los Angeles, city of angels, flowers, and sunshine. London, also called the Square Mile or the Big Smoke. My city is the Salt City that has salt strings and is home to Otto de Orange. The Erie Canal is here, and it's a place full of art and entertainment. From Syracuse Stage and the Community Folk Art Center to the New York State Fair, Syracuse is my city, my home. But only kind of, because I actually live in the wind. <laughs>
And I was inspired by the final line of the selection from Whitman in the film that I was given to respond to. Um, it has the word circuits in it, in circuitry. And as I started writing in response to it, it kind of led to robots. Circuitry sweet. I saw a video, video of, of a robot, robot falling off a wall. wall. Yes, onto a mat. But it waved its arms for her help. It really fell. A scientist's head popped up at the back, too late to reach out. Belonging to the winders of the circuit of circuits. Sending our probes into the darkness to tell us What's, What's going, going on, on out, out there? there? Last night, stretched and still lay the midnight, as you and I lay side by side, Oh, a, a little, little overlapping. We, we could have made love if we chose chosen. We, we didn't. We, we remained with our screens, screens. Just, just one, one night, night out of our, our thousands. thousands. The, the moon, moon can, can get, get through a whole life not needing to be touched. Motionless on the breast of the darkness. Not counting the falcon feather some spaceman dropped into the dust, which was a nice idea, but doesn't actually help any of us down here. Some driver ahead swerves to catch his phone, and he died, maybe. One day we'll have tiny robots disguised as pills to place inside ourselves. The wheeze, the clock, the swap. The falling, they'll release compounds our organs require until, job done, they peacefully dismantle and exit the warm circuits of the body. Today, our Roomba vacuum spreads the cast Vomit across the expensive new rug. It's a robot. It doesn't know any better. Belonging to the winders of the circuit of circuits. On the International Space Station, one errant pencil lead could bring the whole thing screaming down. They say space smells like gunpowder. We don't want to know that. Did you read? Did you learn? Children, my mountains of junked cell phones for what gold we hide in their circuitry. 
looking forth on pavement and land. One whole town in southeastern China, toxic components, gathered radioactivity. These mountains glow at night. And outside of pavement and land, rivers pull through countryside like flat brown snakes. In some lands, a snake dream is a good sign. A snake has one idea. They say someday we'll leave Earth. Companies already taking reservations. Launch all men and women forward. These days they're testing rockets, which incinerate on their takeoff pads. We can't bring ourselves to watch those videos anymore. Flames, spite of all that could be done, reaching toward us, flames from the other side of the stream. The day the Cassini probe self-immolated into Saturn, its 20-year journey complete, by the light of the moon and stars, you pulled over, listening to the story on the radio and wept. Belonging to the winders of the circuit of circuits. Tomorrow I'll talk with you as you drive home. When your phone goes garden beneath the bridge, I'll stay on the line until you come back out the other side. My poem is about Syracuse, different areas of Syracuse that I love, uh, things that I see when I'm on break, uh, sitting outside. Um, memories that I have of Syracuse through my time living here. I marvel at the cells we wear, each of us more or less playing along, dressed in the body's magnificent silk, fooling each other with haircuts and business suits and sweatpants covered in the day's work. I revel in the arbitrary and despair for those who step into the street so sure and confident in their role. Any life is as infinite as any coastline, as turbulent, vast, and inscrutable as any city whose streets are heavy with poverty and crawling with renewal and each with a small market in the heart where you can buy raw honey. In a graveyard behind the elementary school, you discover one day, having lived here for so many years, simply walking along, dumbfounded, floating. Seeing, hearing, and feeling are miracles, and the drone will never be better than the playground, the Zoom recording never better than the whisper, the body camera never better than the library. This, you think, standing at an intersection waiting for the light to change. Staring up at the state tower's glowing eastern face, yes, you admire its gleaming windows, tight gold-red brickwork. But your sight invariably flutters down to land on the sleepless construction workers the curbside pile of broken cinder blocks, delivery trucks, bicycles, the streets, curious, flirtatious sparrows. The self accelerates and swerves and flows like a busy street full of its private furies, Bluetoothed singing, feeling its own irrefutable right of way 
endlessness on a muggy summer afternoon, while over there on the sidewalk, a man with a white beard stands over a trash can, clutching his chest, breathing carefully. Early in the morning, a 20-something shuffles his way down the street, riding his John Deere tractor, watering the baskets of purple geraniums. A minimum wage caretaker of blossoms, sleepwalking through a public good. Unappreciated spirit, dreaming of what it'll do later when its day is done. The dead write us letters and send flowers, and this is spring, when a team of senior citizens descend upon the community rose garden to weed and dig the soil while kids poke a dead squirrel with a stick and say, hey, look at that dead squirrel, and kids scream and laugh in the pool, and kids loaf and lounge under the trees, screaming and laughing and reading, and I say, let's get married to no one in particular. Um, I call it re um, reparation on Whitman. Um, so it's about some of the, um, the black figures that appear in his poems, in his poetry, and really sort of um, asking us to think about democracy, both as he sees it poetically, and then the reality of it as, as well. Sweating and plowing and thrashing and then the chaff from pain and receding. My mouth is tied up in your contemptible dream. By take selling I leave only and continually claiming payment received. The grit within you degrades me. And your runaway slave crackling the twigs of the wood pile I infuse in my blood, bequeath not to you, but to the dirt, vapor, dust. You will hardly know who I am and what I mean. Until you understand, my brothers and sisters, multitudes, not a bit tamed, untranslatable, wild, let loose, loitering on the rooftops of the world waiting for you that appointed rendezvous belong to me. To a certain degree it's a social justice project to redefine uh, democracy at a critical time in our society. I want to share one of my poems as we become the other. Who has the right to say what's human? To decide what shape and form makes you of mankind? The number of toes or fingers? One head, two legs, two eyes? Flat bottom or big and round? Big lips or paper thin? Dark skin or light? kinky hair or straight? What bits and pieces are worthy of a man to make? And just how far can you step out of this alignment and still be given your human assignment? An extra toe, a crumbled arm, a limp, 
a damaged spine, praying to a different God, or just stepping over a border. We shape shift those different than us into the enemy. And as we become the other in this xenophobic dance towards self destruction, we step on our collective evolution and crumble our futures into dust. United we stand, divided we fall. Wow. <laughs> Oh, boy, boy, 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 oh, boy, boy,